What's up everyone? I'm Chad. Welcome to another Open Your Reality video. You know, a couple of days ago, I posted the second Billy Carson interview, and since then, and even before then, there have been many questions in the comments section and on all different subjects. And I thought that it would be great if I answer some of them in this video, because I can't get to all of them. So I picked 21 of the best questions and I'm going to try to move through them at a brisk pace in this video. It's not going to have all the fancy editing and stuff. We're just gonna get down to brass tacks and answer your questions. And by the way, if you wanna watch that Billy interview, I'll post the link below so you can enjoy it later. And the first question up is by Sarah Scott who asks, searched for Billy's channel, The Forbidden Knowledge on here and cannot find it, anyone else? Well, Sarah, it's not that difficult to find. You just have to put the number four and then bit in knowledge and it'll come right up. So yeah, it's there. Billy's channel is on YouTube. And the second question comes from Jerub on the second Billy Carson interview that I recently posted. Wait, what was bleeped out at 48 minutes and 51 seconds? Well, Billy said a few things in the interview. I didn't really want to take a chance with monetization or any more strikes because as some of you know, a few days ago, I got a community guideline warning. The next one would be a strike where they take your channel down for a week or suspend your channel. So what he said was the word for taking someone's life and it begins with an M. And I'm sure that you guys could figure that out. JR asks, can we get a third Dave Weiss interview picking his brain on simulation theory, DMT realms and conspiracies, etc.? We probably can. We probably can. I know that uh, Flat Earth has been a very controversial subject on the channel, and really there's been few in-betweens. It's either you're for it or you're against it. Now, David Weiss is an interesting character, very different from Billy Carson, has a different approach, different set of knowledge, but nonetheless, very entertaining. And I would love to pick his brain on whatever else he knows. I don't know what he knows besides Flat Earth. He may know a little bit something about simulation theory, but that's more my realm. Uh, DMT realms? I don't know. I don't know if David Weiss has ever done DMT or knows about it. Conspiracies? I'm sure he knows a few conspiracies. I'll say this. I'm going to have Billy Carson back on the show. That's definite because he did say he would come back on. So I'll probably hit him up in September. As for uh, David Weiss, yeah, I would have him back on the show again. Maybe a little bit later than that. Javid Benscom Ben Cosme, sorry about the, these names. Javid Ben Cosme says, or get David Weiss on the podcast with Billy Carson. You know, that would be very interesting, the two of them debating, but I don't think Billy would go for it. Did they discuss flat earth theory on this podcast? I think he means uh, Billy Carson. Part one was only mentioned in the last minute of the interview. Carson's response was vague. Yeah, okay, so in part one of the interview I did with Billy Carson, I questioned him about Flat Earth. I basically said to him, is Flat Earth a PSYOP? Because obviously he owns a space company. You know, he talks about star systems. He's not really uh, a Flat Earther, of course. So he said that it was a PSYOP. Now, I didn't feel there was any need to go further with Flat Earth talking about it in part two. So I didn't question him about it because what's the point? We know what he thinks already. Gunsight1 says, I've been looking forward to this. So how are you going to go about deciding who gets those Billy Carson books I like to read? Hint, hint, wink. Yes, great question. Billy said he's going to send me some extra books. Remember, he wrote two books, Compendium of the Emerald Tablets and Woke Does Not Mean Broke, which is a financial book. And I think it's, uh, I didn't get the books yet, but I'm expecting to get them next week. And let's just say, for example, Billy sends me four extra books, two of each one. I thought about this, and I think the best thing to do is to give them out to the people that have actually been supporting the channel via Patreon or PayPal. So all the people that have been supporting the channel over the last, say, 60 days, I'm going to draw their names from a hat and select four of those people. I will contact those four people, tell them that they've won, and ask for their address. And I'm going to use my own dime to send them out, so for all those people who win books, you won't have to pay a thing for the book or for shipping. I'm going to cover the shipping charges, just to, my way of giving back. Now, if you've never donated to the channel, I'm gonna give those people a chance to be in the running as well. And I would say overall, there might be like, at this point, I think there's like 40 people on Patreon and something like maybe 15 or 20 people on PayPal that have donated in the last. So you, 
Right now, there's, uh, if you think about it, four books, I'm just assuming four, 60 people, you have like a one in 15 chance of winning. That's if nobody else donates. But I'm going to give all the viewers that never donated or haven't donated in the last 60 days another week. Okay, so today's Saturday. I'm going to wait until next Friday night. I'm going, if you want to get in the running, all you have to do is go to Patreon or PayPal, donate at least $5, and you're in the running. I will put your name in the hat. Okay, and this is also supports the channel. And of course, if Billy sends me more books, your chances just go up. And I think it's only fair to do that just as a way to give back to the people who have given to me. Literally Shaking NPC says, I'm missing something. What is Company Video 2019? Well, you know, I had to talk in code in that video, the true nature of the matrix. That was a really good video. I would say in the last month or two, that was to me the best video that I've put out. And I'm very critical of my own work, but I have to say, I put a fair amount of time into that video and I think the message was good. I think everything was good about the video. So if you have not watched it, you can watch it right here. I'll post a link to it below as well. But like other YouTubers, I have to talk in code a little bit to avoid some of these, you know, copyright strikes and demonetization. And those just frankly take down the video if you even mention a word. So Company Video 2019 is basically that, you know, that name that's been mentioned on the news since the beginning of 2020. It begins with a C and it ends with a nine. Can you guess what that is? I think you can. Okay says, I've had the experience of manipulating reality with my mind. Was fleeting, but I don't think it's a good thing to be able to do that. What if the simulation crashes? Well, okay, um, that's pretty cool that you've been able to manipulate reality with your mind. Depends on to what extent. Tom says that we can use our intent to change reality, and I definitely believe that. So does Billy. I would say that if the simulation crashes, you probably wouldn't even be aware. You wouldn't, we wouldn't even know it. Now, don't worry about that though, because consciousness is the only true fundamental thing, and the simulation is just a virtual reality. So your consciousness will remain intact. Your IUOC will remain intact. But it, I, I just cannot see the simulation crashing because Tom Campbell says that this is actually a good learning lab for consciousness. And so if it is, the LCS is not going to let it crash. Trust me on that. You don't have to worry. Well, some people worry because when they talk about simulation theory, they actually believe and they, they, their concern or fear is that what if the simulation crashes? I would never walk around concerned about that. Tracy Evolution of Self More says, Chad, I love your videos. I have a question. I've heard that I alone cannot change the way the world will go. I know I can create my own world, but just myself cannot change the collective. How can just you change the outcome of the collective? That's a great question, Tracy. I would say this, there have been very few people in history that have been able to make a change to the collective. Even people like Martin Luther King Jr., and, uh, you know, Nelson Mandela, these people who have, who've had an influence on the masses have not been able to change the collective, everyone. So they've been able to change maybe the minority of people, right? The, the smaller percentage of people's minds, maybe even the larger percentage, and this is over decades. And these people really took massive action and they were fortunate in that their message spread, but there are a ton of people just like Martin Luther King Jr. and Nelson Mandela, whose message really doesn't get out too much. So I wouldn't concentrate or focus too much on changing the collective. The most important thing is to change yourself. Tom Campbell says that all the LCS ever asks of us is just to evolve ourselves spiritually just to in lower our entropy, just to increase our level of evolution. And that's really enough. That's all that's needed. Because if we raise ourselves up, we raise the whole system and we raise all of humanity. So just keep that in mind. You're never going to change the collective, but you can change yourself. And just I've, what I've noticed is just by changing myself, I've been able to influence other people indirectly. Like creating this channel, for example, was just kind of an outpouring of my creativity and my my, my desire to spread my message, to spread the message of MBT. And through that, a lot of people have been helped by these videos. So I am changing the collective in a very minor degree. The three or 4,000 or 5,000 views that I'm getting per video 
is minor compared to most bigger YouTubers. However, it's still changing. It's still creating an effect because the few thousand people that watch each of my videos, many of these people have told me these, these um, content videos that I've made have really helped them assimilate difficult circumstances in their life. Next question is by Duran Childs. Can you ask Billy Carson, Will and Lil and other Anunnaki return to the earth or are they still here? Now I did ask Billy about this in part two of the interview and he did say that he believes that the hybrid bloodlines of the Anunnaki are still here and that would be some of the ruling class which is why they always like to mate within their own family to try to keep the bloodline pure. Leonard Oaks asks, do you have a website or alternative platforms in case this one gets canned? Yes, Leonard, I do. And I don't foresee Open New Reality getting canned. It's gonna, it would take quite a lot for that to happen because I'm not, here's the thing, I've got so much to say about the current situation. And I really can't open my mouth to it because of YouTube. You just can't, you say one word and your video is taken down, you get a, a community strike. And so it's very difficult for people. A lot of people talk in code. Um, and even talking in code is not 100% that you know, you're going to get away with it. So I had a long conversation last night with one of my viewers. It's one of my viewers I got friendly with. And um, you know, he was really enlightening me to this whole situation. Not that I need to be enlightened, but you know, he was going into the real specifics of it. And we were talking about it. And, and I have another friend, a best friend, where we were talking. I'm telling you, it is, if I could just share this information with you, it is, it's outrageous. But anyway, yeah, my alternative uh, website is openyourreality.com. I actually created this website a couple years ago, and I haven't really done much with it. There are nine articles up there, and what my plan was to just create an article for every video that I do. So if I have a couple hundred videos, there'll be a couple hundred articles with colorful pictures. And I was basically going to fill out the website and uh, a recent viewer actually contacted me and said that he would be willing to work on the on the website for me. So I'm in communication with him. I, I wouldn't let anybody ever work for free. I told him I'd pay him, but uh, we'll see what's, what comes of that. The other alternative platform is YouTube itself because my secondary channel is Ben the Spoon where I'm posting spiritual videos. And all of these spiritual videos are in a positive light. This Open Your Reality channel, most of my videos are in a positive light, but sometimes I talk a little bit about dystopian things. Menser1951 asks, can you go out of body, Chad? And great video, by the way. Talking sound effects was brilliant. And he's talking about the video I made on machine elves. And I, I saw a little criticism there from people saying, well, you've never tried DMT. How can you talk about DMT? Well, I was talking about other people's experiences. You know, you don't, ha you don't have to go through the experience itself sometimes to talk about it. And I prefaced the video right away by saying, I've never tried a drug, I've never done DMT. I'm just telling you what other people experienced. So thank you. But no, I cannot go out of body. I feel like I've slipped out of body by maybe a few inches or a foot sometimes and I'll pop right back in. And I, I wouldn't even consider that like the out of body where you're, you know, you're going to other realms and seeing other things. No, I can't do that. I can't do that at will. The few times in my life that that happened to me, I was kind of like in a half sleep. So no, I would love to though, by the way, and I've read the accounts of Robert Monroe and Tom Campbell and others who went out of body, but I don't profess to do things or know things that I don't, you know, I just want to be genuine on here about what I could do. Myers 3, can you do a video on what happens to a person with dementia? Does the soul leave? Are they trapped? This has been something that I have always wondered about. You know, that is a great question. In a way, their consciousness, at least here in the avatar, is trapped, I would say. But however, if they go into a dream state, they may be perfectly fine. So it is temporary, though, you know, as is this life. But again, their consciousness, their higher self is perfectly intact. But this is a great question, and I will probably make a video on it, talking about what happens to people in comas, Alzheimer, dementia, things like that. Steven Greco asks, so did we ever really matter, or are we just pawns or tools for the sake of the collective consciousness? And this is on a video that I made 
about the truth about the origin of consciousness. Yeah, so uh, really like that thumbnail I made, by the way. Sometimes I really, um, you know, I spend some time on these thumbnails because it's like the thumbnail is like the cover of a book. You can write the best book in the world, but it has, it has a bad cover and no one's going to pick it up and read it. So that's why the thumbnails are so important. But anyway, to get to your question, Stephen, no, we are not really like, don't, the way you phrase the question seems negative. Are we pawns or tools for the LCS? We are the LCS, okay? We are the larger consciousness system broken down into individuated units of consciousness, it's very small individuated units of consciousness where there are many of us. And we are the system's way or strategy to lower its entropy to evolve and progress. So these smaller units of individual consciousness can interact with each other and have a much more rich and varied experience than just one monoblock of consciousness. And that's why it was done. So we're not tools, we're not pawns in its game. We are it. We're just a strategy for evolving. So I would never look at it in a negative way. The people that look at it in a negative way might be the ones who are dystopian, who believe that we are living inside a matrix. And I get that because this simulation, there is, there is evil in it. There is some bad people, bad things go on, but that's kind of necessary because this simulation has a duality of good and evil. And so the evil comes through, but the good comes through as well. The Renaissance Ronin asks, Hi, did Anthony Peake respond back to your email? How amazing would it be if he did another interview with you? So unfortunately not. I've written to Anthony a couple of times. I have not received an answer back. I've even written to Tom and I have not received anything back. And I've written to dozens of other people and have not received anything back. And I don't blame them. I'm just, the only thing I could do is continue to try to contact people. So yeah, I can send a third or fourth Wow, I said I would make these answers brief. So much for making them brief. Sorry about that. Hope you like long videos. Christopher Escobar asks, can you please make a video of the hero's journey and archetypes? Yes, that is a great subject for a video. For those people that don't know the hero's journey, I believe it was, it was a book by Joseph Campbell who talked about how all the Hollywood movies that we see are all formatted around the same basic story. It's the hero's journey, it's usually 12 part, and it goes around like this, where the, the hero starts off, and you know the hero goes through all these stages of the story, and then comes back to the end. So that is, you know, David Wilcock talks about that in The Synchronicity Key. It's very, very interesting how it relates to us on a spiritual level. It also relates to the 25,000 year cycle that civilizations go through. And by the way, you know, I know that David talks about us going into a golden age, but there are people who feel we're going into just the opposite. As far as the archetypes, there are various archetypes that we all fall into. Have you ever seen somebody and you just feel like they're familiar? Like, you know, you've seen that person before. Not that you've seen their exact face, but you feel like you know that type of person. And I, I think there are these basic archetypes. I think there's like 22 or 24 of them. And most of us fit into those particular archetypes. Some, we can be a combination as well. I find that fascinating. Yes, so I will make a video about that. Thank you for Christopher. Bamary asks, hey Chad, I have a question. From what you have studied, have you found out if it is possible to evolve the quality of our consciousness without incarnating? Great question right there. You know, coming to Earth, coming to physical matter realities, I call it the fast track to evolution because it's really challenging being a human being. You know, we have to navigate through so many obstacles, uh, sickness of the body, you know, finances, relationships, you know, careers, uh, you name it. I mean, we have, we have so much going on. Just flip on the news and see what's going on today. Our consciousness is being bombarded with all this negativity. So this is the fast track to evolution. However, can you evolve the same way when you're not in a physical matter reality, when you're in the afterlife or the spirit world? I'd say the answer is no, you can't evolve as fast because there's really not as much skin in the game. You can't be hurt, you can't be taken out, you don't need money, you don't need to eat. So it's a completely different experience. So you're not going to make the same progress 
it, can you evolve in the spirit world or the afterlife? I believe you can because there are roles for conscious beings that do not want to reincarnate. And for those people that have finished their cycles of incarnation and want to go on to something more. So yes, the people that become spirit guides or soul nursery mothers or any of those jobs in the afterlife or spirit world, those people are working to help others. So they are evolving their quality of consciousness. John Doe. Now we know that's not your name, John. How can we, <laughs> how can we participate in ENS or the remote viewing that you mentioned? So ENS means extension neurosensing, which is basically remote viewing. How can we participate in that? Or how can we remote view? That's a great question, right? Wouldn't that be an awesome superpower for all of us to have? That our consciousness can go out in time and space and see things that we could normally not see. One of my favorite stories of remote viewing happened in the book Alien Agenda by Jim Mars. And I talked about this where there were some remote viewers in the Stargate program who were asked to go back to, I believe it was the year 1953, 54, somewhere around there, when Eisenhower supposedly secretly met with aliens at um, an Air Force base. And so these remote viewers used their consciousness to go to that meeting and describe what they saw. And to me, that was one of the most fascinating accounts of remote viewing in all the books that I've read. But I've been hooked on remote viewing ever since I read about it. I've tried it, I've not been able, I have not been successful in it. But I, I have a book that I took out of the library that talks a lot about remote viewing. I wanted to go through that book and I wanted to make a video on remote viewing, giving my thoughts on it, which I will do hopefully within the next few weeks. So it is a skill. I do believe anybody can learn it. And I do believe that it takes a lot of practice. It's probably a skill that would take hours of practice per day for months, if not a few years, to be able to get to do. I'm not even saying master, I'm saying to be able to get to do. Paul Daniels asks, can we get a list of the books where Billy sourced this information from? And Paul is referring to the Billy Carson interview part one. Now I made a follow-up video where I said I found Billy Carson's book collection. And if you wanna see that video, you can watch it here. I'll also post it in the link below. But in that video, um, I actually took a copy of Billy's video, some of it, and I put it on my, my channel. And Billy is basically showing his book collection over like 30 minutes. And his books are laid out all over his house. So I said to Billy, do you have a, a list of all these books? Because I think it would be very helpful to the viewers if they could have a list so they could know what books to read, like what books you read to get this knowledge. And some of these books were amazing. He, I mean, books that I've never heard of. And he said, you know, Chad, that's a great idea. I'm probably going to have one of my sons come to my house and write down all the names of the books and put them in a list. So I'll ask Billy in a couple of weeks if he has that list. And if he does, I'll be glad to share that with you. Spilled Milk Quadruple Zero asks, hello, Chad, can you make a video about non-playable characters in the simulation? Talk about things like how to identify one or if you are one and what happens to them when they die. And I already made a video on NPCs. It's called, I believe, Who Are the NPCs of Our World, which you can watch here. And an NPC stands for non-player character. And this is basically a person who doesn't have an individuated unit of consciousness. It's being played by the system. Very similar to a video game, where the video game is, is mostly playing uh, the avatars. The only real consciousness that plays an avatar in a video game are the people who are actually pressing the controller. Everything else is an NPC. In our world, I believe that there are some NPC. I could make another video on it. I will consider that. Thank you very much for the suggestion. And that brings us to the final question, guys, which is by JK, who asks, could you uh, co collaborate on the red light therapy? I think he means elaborate. So yes, I can elaborate on red light therapy. Just to be very brief, red light and infrared light therapy is a therapy designed to help people with uh, skin problems, muscle soreness, and joint pain. And the way it works is you take one of these red lights, and I happen to have the red light man. This was recommended by um, a health expert, and I've had the light now for over a year and a half. And I use it 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening. I shine it on a particular part of my body, and I've noticed that it has healing effects. Now, it, on my channel, I've promoted very, very few things. I've promoted the uh, subliminal 
a meditation software that I use, and I've promoted the red light. And that's about it. I think I one time promoted a, uh, an Ascended Master game, board game, which I thought was pretty cool during Christmas time. I actually got chided out for that by some of the viewers. Like, what do you do? You know? Guys, if you watch any big time YouTuber, I say any, but most big time YouTubers, they'll run a minute commercial spot, either in the beginning or right in the middle of their video that has something about a product that has nothing to do with their channel or the subject of the video. So when I talk to you about these things, I say them in relation to the video and because they help and because I use them, okay? That's not to say that I'll never, I'll never have a, an, another sponsor that talks about something different, but I just wanted to explain that red light therapy has worked. For me, it's been effective, and when I asked Billy Carson about it, he said he's just recently started using it as well. Now, there are a ton of red lights that you can choose from. They are on Amazon. However, the red light man that I use is only at the red light man website. So I'll put the link to that below. Uh, that light is approximately $250, but there are other lights there. And I know some of you might think, wow, that is expensive. Well, if you want something that heals your body, you get what you pay for. There are lights that are like $50 on Amazon. I think they're pretty cheap. I would not buy a cheap like a light like that. I would want to buy something that's quality because I want to know it works. Well guys, there it is. I've answered 21 of your questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm going to be posting a video most likely tomorrow or Monday on a spiritual topic. And don't forget to check out my secondary channel, Ben the Spoon. Thank you so much for staying with me. I'll see all of you guys in the next video. Peace.